All right, so Serena can keep the ball going for days. Um, <laughs> but we're going to make it a little bit difficult. It's something that you kind of already do with your kids. Yep. So we're going to put a, a marker on the ground, and then we're going to strike it, go across and around, strike again, across and around again. So we're going to make it a little more difficult, a little more physical, so you okay. can get a little more exercise. Yeah, I actually saw Rafa on, on a video where he had a, uh, a cone and he was hitting when he was hitting forehands and stuff and he would come around the cone every time so this is even up to the the highest pro level still an exercise you can do all right even so, rafa does it even rafa does it <laughs> so now there's a little bit of movement in it your turn right. harry uh... <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> in the front <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> all right so i'm going to ask serena for a little coaching here um one two things that i noticed that you do and obviously you were a pro so you're great at it is that you get into that ready position fairly quickly right you you step down with that right foot you kind of launch in and then the hands the arm quick right is that something that you teach your kids absolutely it's all it's it's all in the hip really um and the reason why the hip is so important is it will take actually a lot of uh pressure of your arm mm. so because if i don't use my hip i'm going to use my arm and if i if i if i can use my legs I can use my hip, I can just kind of let the racket do the work for me. And that's when you kind of need a, a, a nice heavier racket because the, the momentum is not being generated by your arm, but it's more generated by your legs and hip. And now here's another thing that I've noticed uh, a lot of times tennis players, their glutes are not very developed. Mm. So what happens, they go here and then the glutes are not helping them to come up. So they just go forward with their knees like that, causing knee problems. And so if they could use the, the glutes to come up and then turn, the hip actually comes out a lot more, generating a lot more momentum. So do you come up straight? So do you come up straight, like straight into that? Yeah, so you come up into the ball. I mean, I actually saw Federer, he, he actually did something there too, where he was like, he was going like this and then he, he comes up. Mm. there mm -hmm. so I mean there's there's a lot of ways of doing it because obviously he has an extended arm so he has to adjust a little bit differently but the idea is to really f think about the center here the center of gravity mm -hmm. if you go forward just remember the balls then kind of come down mm -hmm. if you move backwards the balls gonna come up right. So depending on the arc that you want to hit that will determine how much you are gonna go forward or back but the main thing is to make sure that the hip extends. So it's like when you do weight training, you're not going to do, just do it like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're going to actually use your hips. Got it. And so same thing there, but you need your glutes to do it effectively. Okay. So this is one time that your butt comes in handy, your butt muscle. Have you seen, <laughs> have you seen the, the, the pros? They all have bubble butts. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you're looking at those butts, but <laughs> they all are very well. Look at Alcaraz. I mean, they all have really, really strong glutes. Right. And so it is essential because that gives you that kind of loading and unloading power. Is there an exercise for that? Um, or lunges. Oh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> lunges. Yep. You could, that's why they actually, you lunge and you come up. And then because if you light it on your foot, mm -hmm. there's an easier way oh. to rotate. But if you're not coming up, you're going to go forward, and that's usually why a lot of knees get hurt on the right side. Got it. Would you mind like doing a few sure. and then like walking us through the, the steps of the it? The steps of it? Yeah. So coming back to what the hips function is here is a lot of times also if you don't turn completely, then you're not going to get that same amount of like kind of rotation in, in your upper body. So make sure that when you turn that you're a little bit more in a, in a, in a lateral position because that's going to help you to stay in alignment and that will help 
everything to come up. I actually use a stepper sometimes um, with the kids and then they step up and then hit because and then they have to actually load and unload and then I have them do it without the stepper. So, but the whole idea, so let's put it on. Okay. So you'll see. So I load and I unload. I load and I unload. So now here's what you don't want to do. It's not using the hip at all. Oh. Do you see this? That's what I do. <laughs> and now hip. And you'll see in the pros in the pictures, this leg usually is up. Like they kind of have this leg because it's for balance. So when you you set, it helps them to kind of snap. So hip and snap. Oh, interesting. And if they want to come through, they can. But you need something that gives a little resistance. There. Oh, interesting. Because now I, I go here. I, and we I were... barely use my arm. And that's why I would play with a heavier racket. So we were always taught not to lift the leg up, but, but that's... Well, I have people doing this. Right. <laughs> that doesn't work. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Because I didn't, I didn't really use my hip. But if I use my hip, it's kind of more like a kick. Right. Got it. Because then, and then I can come back right. very fast. And then this, okay. yeah, so your hands, like you get into that position, the cock position, the ready, and then it's, whoom, right? Your, your velocity of that racket head speed is probably, I won't want to say off the charts, but it looks <laughs> like it's off the charts. <laughs> Years of experience. Um, so basically what's happening is, imagine you have a little pocket in the racket here, like a little pocket, and you put a stone in there. Mm -hmm. And if you want to flick the stone out, mm. right? That's, that's what you're looking for. So if I stand still and I wait for the right time, I can do it. If I don't do it in the right time, it's not going to give me the same effect. And then everything else you do, your setup, your rotation, it all helps to sync so that you can have that flick or sling shot feeling at the right time. Set up and then go. And so that's so like really a where it's one, going. right? One and, the, and then the two. So and unload the first. Three, but, but unload like that? first. Unload go first. Down, go up almost first. Okay. Because you need to help your whole body to come up into the ball and then you just snap over. Otherwise, you're going to use your arm again. Mm -hmm. I got gotcha. you. So there are two forces when you play. The one is your hands that brings the ball down. And if I don't use my legs, I literally will just have lots of spin and it will just come down. The other force is my legs that helps me to lift the ball up. And so if I don't then close my hands, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the ball is going to fly. And so that's why the rackets of today makes it so much easier to close your hands, especially if it's a lighter head. That's why the clash, the shift, they're all really, really well designed for spin and the ability to close the face. So, but you have to make sure you use your legs in the correct way in order to get that full benefit. Otherwise, you're just going to do this spin and you just don't get enough weight or heaviness on the ball. Got it. So that's what they're saying. Like when you hit like a heavy ball, heavy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah because yeah. you use both forces and they worked like they exploded against each other. Mm -hmm. The legs came up, the hands came down and that's why it goes and it goes really heavy. So Rafa is insanely heavy, like mm -hmm. how much loading he does. But I mean, all, all of them now. Right. Well, that's why he has the big legs. Yeah. Right. The big butt. The big butt. <laughs> the big butt. <laughs> Everybody thinks that Rafa does it with this, you know, like this, this motion. Oh, no. Yeah. Go, go look, he, this is completely round. So when he hits, this is super, super round. I mean, and he has the arm that goes mm -hmm. straight out. Um, and I'm always worried about juniors coming into the straight arm too fast. If you look at them when they were younger on the YouTube videos, they all had more bent arms. Mm -hmm. um, because when you're older, you have more strength in your forearm to bring it over. But if you go in the beginning as a junior, this too, too quick, you're going to make your shoulder come out causing shoulder issues mm. and you're not going to be able to bring it over fast enough. So I do think that's a progression and it shouldn't necessarily be taught completely when kids are nine years old. Got it. That's how they get injured. Got it. So legs, legs, snap, snap, close, <laughs> close at the right time though. Let at the racket <laughs> do the work for you. Right? Yep. It's kind of like throwing. 
So it's kind of like you have um, to wait for pitcher, it. pitcher yeah. football. You, you know, have right? to wait for it. You go like that at the same time, like that. Right. Okay. And everything else supports that motion. Right. The kids are always kind of amazed when I just go, yeah, and a serve. Just go down and snap. And I literally can throw the ball over the baseline on the other side. And they're like, how do you do that? <laughs> it's because of the timing and waiting for the right time to release. Got it. And it's not just all arms or wrists. It's, no, it's, it's all of it. It's the whole thing. It's the whole, it's the whole momentum, center of gravity, loading, unloading, timing. Got it. Nature's rules, as I call it. Got it. Well, thank you for explaining that. First, first you need to keep your um, your, your 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 unit turn because that's going to help you to take the racket actually mm -hmm. back. Because if you if you release now, mm -hmm. do you see now the racket is back? Mm -hmm. But if you didn't have that unit turn and you only go to here, mm -hmm. now you're going to lose your hip because there's not enough weight to come behind you to actually grab your hip with you. Got it. So the unit turn has to be... There. Now, now you have time to drop the racket and scoop the hip with you. So, so here, right? Oh, Elbow. here. Okay, here. Okay, now legs down. Legs down, down. Come up, up, and now you drop. And stay on this right side for a little bit longer. Okay. Try to relax your wrist a little bit. Because oh. remember, this wrist, if you cock it up too much, you're not going to be able to, to let go. Got so it. have it more relaxed. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, so... Unit turn, down, Set. up. Yep. Felt a little awkward, but... But don't, but don't go onto your front foot. Okay, don't Cause, go... Because oh. remember, we're doing open stance. Got it. So um, just, to, just to be clear, open stance and neutral stance, very different strokes. Mm -hmm. But they all should be loading on the right foot. So if you do an open stance, you're going to be here. And this one literally goes up. So what you were doing, you were going forward. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. for a certain shot, if it's really high, so, I mean, you, you probably could do that as mm -hmm. an adjustment, but for general. If you do a neutral stance, you want to be more, it's like old old school stance. Yeah, but that's me. But you still <laughs> weigh, your weight is on the back leg. Got it. Because what you're going to do is you're going to come under the ball and you're going to come around. Got it. Now you also used your hip, even though you were doing a neutral stance. Got it. Got but it. if I just go like this and I go like that, it's, it's, it's very few shots in tennis that you would actually completely need to do that. Got it. So we're talking open stance, so basically, here. Yep. And I'll and just kick. Or, so try try, or try back. something. Kick this leg up straight. Yep. Up. Got it. And stay on that right side. Okay. So here, down, down and, and kick. Up. There you go. And see now. Oh. You, you, you need to work on your balance a little bit. Right. But, right. Right. But that's you're going to get so much more heaviness out of it because now you're using the legs, and you can close with your hands. Got it. Okay. So I so it's here and then. Yeah, like that. And I okay. use a little more glutes. I get it. I get it. Because I, in my mind, from my old school strokes, I feel like my weight should be coming forward in order to get the heaviness on the stroke. That's in my mind because for flat balls, right? So remember, there wasn't a lot of spin on on the balls, and the rackets were so weirdly designed in the old days that the racket didn't come over, so you had to go through it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a lot of people in the old days, especially women. Um, because they didn't play with he head eye prestiges that was like really small heads. They had to get bigger heads. So when they hit, the wrists always stood behind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They never, totally. they, they could never come over. Now they can because the rackets are way better designed. And they're head lighter. And, and the headlight helps mm -hmm. because then you can make it heavier in the, in the grip, which gives you more stability. Right, right. I get it. Okay. I'll try a few. Do you see how it's already going up now, right? And now you have to close your hands. Hold your balance. And don't forget to breathe. <laughs> but I would say, Harry, for you in the beginning, would be better to do the neutral stance and bring your leg around. Okay. So so load and then that's it. And stay go even a little lower on your back leg and then and then swing around it. Because that, that's gonna give you more balance and stability and a good start until you can do the open stance. There you go. Do you see that? Under and go. Wow, I hear the sound. It's getting a lot more power. I should have put Q on that. <laughs> wow. I, the hands are freer. 
I feel it. Yes, and because because your hip allows you to 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 rotate. Oops. <laughs> Oopsies. All right, Serena, thank you so much for um, teaching me the proper technique for using muscles that I probably don't use very much. <laughs> this is why my shoulder hurts actually and my arm hurts because I'm all arms. So, so yeah, it's, thank it's, you. It's, it's just funny. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in starting like an injury prevention type of thing uh, course because I, I realized how many people don't know why they get hurt sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, you know, because doctors don't always know the tennis reason why they get hurt. Like mm -hmm. they, they know the reason when you already got hurt and what to do maybe. By the time you get to a doctor, it's probably a little too late. So probably start with somebody like Serena that could teach you better technique and using the right muscles, just like me, because I'm kind of sweating right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you could get a workout and, and hopefully he'll get injured less. <laughs> from yeah, hopefully I work out my muscle here. <laughs> Lutus Maximus. <laughs>